Chris. So. <laughs> Hi, my name is John Casali. I've been running the Yield River cleanup for the last five years. We're at 300,000 pounds of trash in our little community. So I'm not going to say a whole lot because I have pictures, but I'm done cleaning up. I want to hand over the Eagle River cleanup to the homeless, the people that are giving the homeless the bags, the homeless activists, that they want to clean up after the people they give the stuff to. I'm no longer going to pick up your trash, and I'm not going to say a whole lot more than that, but at the last meeting, we had a young lady here who promised that she wanted, because it, it, the meeting was about respect. That's what this is all about. So they said, well, give us a chance. Give us a chance. So from August 25th to September 25th, we spent $3,700 cleaning every camp from, from, uh, from Sprawl Creek to Dean Creek. So when we come to that meeting, there should be nothing in those woods. So for 14 days, we made an agreement. I would take pictures, the, the homeless or the transients would clean up their mess. This is what I have found. This is what I have found in 14 days. Feces in the river, over nine piles in one area. I, I'm sorry, John, can people please shut their cell phones off? Uh, it's going to be very distracting. Another camera. People, people are drinking this water. There's two porta potties 200 yards from this species and this species here. Nobody in the world is allowed to do this. It doesn't make no difference if you have a bad childhood or what. That's right. Nobody in the world is allowed to do this. That's all I have to say. And I'll be passing over the Eel River cleanup. I will never pick up one more <coughs> bag of garbage. We've picked up 7,500 bags of garbage, 300,000 pounds, unheard of anywhere that I've ever lived in my whole life. And of course I feel like I feel. People are shitting in my drinking water. So if anybody here thinks that that's okay, just raise their hand. But people are doing this. That's all I have to say. So. If I was you guys, I would get somebody in charge of your group to clean up after yourselves because I no longer will be doing it. Thank you. Sorry. Yay!
took me his glasses last time around, but I'm not sitting with these <laughs> red ones. That's why I love this county. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue to pass the speaking list around. Uh, but for those of you who don't have the sheet, I'm going to read it off. It's, it's the perceived problem. So this is, again, just a summary. There's probably others. Uh, but the perceived problems are the style of discourse, variously termed lack of respect, demands, etc. Number two, safety. One, women, children, elders feel unsafe. Two, dogs without leashes. Dogs scare people. Three, drugs, alcohol. Four, trash. Five, feces. Six, numbers, strain on resources. Also, lack of resources, local, county, state. Seven, lack of public space, housing. And number eight, panhandling. Uh, we, we brainstormed some solutions, or at least they, some solutions came out. Um, and Paul pulled this uh, a, a list of about eight items out. One, compassion, give respect, get respect, compassion control. Also, applicable to the safety issues below, mental health center. Continuing agreement, transients are here for whatever reasons are here to stay. No services will not stop the flow. Must agree to manage, not get rid of the problem. Then answers or endless conflict. I'm not sure what that means, but we can figure it out. Number two, neighborhood watch people take responsibility for themselves. Homeless help homeless, etc. Code of conduct, education, festival security as a model. Three, warn people of crimes. The drugs and alcohol are crimes. Use police. Four, education, work together, self-help. Five, porta potty, public bathrooms. Also talk with Betty Chin, shower possibility as well. Six, networking, better communication, including with state, local, and county. Sharing, gift, reciprocity, self-help, barter, identify available resources, provide minimal resources. Seven, campground, shelter, adopt a homeless person, have public spaces, community. And eight, community script tokens, SF model. I believe that's referring to um, a card that's passed out that lists services that are available in lieu of cash um, for panhandling. And uh, these were just ideas that were brought up. And we were hoping possibly to expand and, and uh, move on over this side. Uh, the crowd tonight is actually a little bit larger than last time, so we'll see how this works. I am the right way. My name is Blake Lehman, and I'm a business owner in town. Parents have owned businesses in, in this town. My brother does. I do. It has gotten so bad behind my office where people come, they shit. They let their dogs back there. They trash my property. I can't let my own kids get out of their car, out of my car, and play on property that their grandparents bought and that their parents and aunts and uncles try to keep clean. It's gotten so bad. I left the poop shovel out one night, and it was gone. You can't, if you don't walk up every single thing in this town, it's gone. There's dogs running around. It's filthy. It's nasty. I have friends come from Reno. I mean, is there any place worse in this world than Reno? They came here and stayed two days. They were going to stay five. And they're like, we're leaving this shithole. Are you kidding? I mean, we live in a place where people pride themselves on being environmentally sensitive, and we let this happen. I mean, this place is trashed. The people that have spoken before me, you know, you guys spoke pretty eloquently, and I'll believe it when I see it, because right now, I don't see it. This place is a dump, and it was never like that before. The churches, the post office, the grocery stores, they've all fenced their property because they're tired of cleaning it up, they're trying, tired of seeing their stuff walk out their front door without being paid for. I mean, I'm going to have to gate our alley, which is that main alley in town, which is going to be no delivery trucks to those businesses back there, nobody driving through there anymore, nobody walking through there anymore, just to keep it clean. It's absolutely disgusting. And when I keep catch people crapping back there and littering back there, what do I get? An F you. And then I have to call the sheriff and have them. We've got better things to spend our money on than chasing these people around town. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, Paul Anderson and Jim Truett want this park down in town. Well, I've got a better idea. 
Send it to Paul Ensmer's house at the top of Peckwood Springs Road. Or at Jimmy's house at the end of Cedar Lane. Let them clean up for a while. Let them clean up for a while. Let's start. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. That's where I'm going. I also have a question. Need to be I also yes. have a question. The Veterans for Peace organization. Do you have to be a veteran to belong to the Veterans for Peace? Because I think that's hiding behind somebody. Because veterans deserve our respect. They fought for this country and they deserve our respect. But when people hide behind that name, that really pisses me off. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and, and I have one more thing to say. That the people before me said that the, the guy said that he's, he works six and seven days a week. Well, if he works six or seven days a week, he ought to have enough money to go buy a campground in a legitimate campsite and take a shower. Also, if, I mean, I guess I'm done. But if yeah. this town's going to be clean, yeah. there's only one way it's going to happen. If we're going to do it, because seven humble people have taken care of themselves for years, we're still going to have to do it. And it's trash like our community's got to stop. All right. <laughs>
We all agree not to get personal. We all agree not to get personal. On the Humboldt County Sheriff's Department, I have a lawsuit. I'm in a federal lawsuit. You want to talk about formal and not personal against the Humboldt County Sheriff's Department in the city of Arcata for human rights, civil rights violation. We did a public records request where we said we want to know from May of 2006 to May of, of now, till now, what you have, your policies, your practices regarding homeless people, houseless people, people sitting on a sidewalk, people you consider transient, people on property. And you know what they said? We don't have anything. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? They don't have anything. So where do people go? You can't even write these formal things and have them tell the truth. But they're going to put this, did you all have this forum? I get I get to go you have this forum to keep complaining about crap. And like none of you could handle it. And this community, I'm sorry, this is a privileged community. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Like everybody's so hurting. When somebody doesn't have a place to go to the bathroom, that's an issue right then and there. That's not something you can have 20 meetings about saying, well, we got a little bit more compassionate. That's something that needs to happen. And um you know, if you deny somebody their most basic human function, sleep, poop, piss, then you're in trouble. You're denying your own humanity, you're denying other people's humanity. So you all can laugh and you can go back home tonight and talk about the garbage that somebody left because churches aren't open anymore for people to go in and sleep in to eat in. Right Nothing. So I mean, think about that. Think about the fact that every door is closed and you all are yeah. complaining about garbage. You know, I did speak at the last meeting, and I, I think it's got a little bit better. I had one vocal guy I don't see in there. I think it's Travis, who came down and helped me sweep out the laundromat. He showed up a couple mornings, and, you know, we couple breakfast bars and stuff for some sweeping. It was great. He showed up a couple times and then didn't show up, but it was very helpful. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. My name is Lost. Lost. Yeah, I see it at the park every day. And you see me everywhere. I don't why did the meetings have to make you guys decide to I start picking up? I don't understand. If you want to choose to also, speak. Also, um, yeah. no matter how bad I have to go to the bathroom, I will never, ever, I promise all of you in this room, <laughs> never <laughs> start having ever shit on the sidewalk. Ever. I <laughs>
said, yeah, what we do is we run them out of here. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. our job. That, that's what we're supposed hmm. to do. That's what this is all about. Property owners want us to do. You guys don't own any of this. Whether you like it or not, you have to deal with people that don't look like you, don't act like you, don't do what you want to do, don't do what you like them to do. But we all have to get along. Somehow, if we don't, we're going to end up in a war. Mm -hmm. Right here, right. among our own people. <laughs> and calling names. We did want to try to bring this towards solutions. And I'm afraid, as far as I'm concerned, the majority of the speakers on both sides are just going to aggravate the situation and make it worse. And, uh, I say yeah. one tiny thing to That's uh, democracy, though. All right. Yeah. All right. That's fine, but yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, you do. Right? Yes. I, I we'll think I'm going to a night to be with my kids at the science fair oh, so oh, uh, oh, to do this. Oh, oh boom. Boo.
let's go through this interview. We, we had a meeting last time. We, we, everybody had a chance to vent. And people said time. disgusting things. I heard it on the radio. Yeah, I understand. But, it, but it's, it's, all we're doing is escalating. It's just getting more and more intense. And, and the person is right. It is going to be a war. That's how people are to each other. It's fine. We call the meetings. The meetings over. That's how people express themselves. You have no authority. The meeting is not over. Seriously. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. 
You want a solution? You think of a way to fix it. You give them a place to go, and they won't crowd your street. They won't block your, your stores. All right. You give them a place to go, you give them a garbage. You give them you give them a bathroom, which you guys have taken away. Okay, all right. So you're doing it again. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. from each of the interests, and, it, 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 and otherwise it's going to go on, because quite frankly, one thing that was said at the last meeting is true, is it's not going to go away by itself. It's not going to go away. I just think that the whole thing is going to go away. What is it? I just need that clarified. The conflict that we are here to discuss and to resolve. The, 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 uh, excuse me. If, if you need to talk, you want to talk to me on the outside. What we do need is we do need, we do come up with a number of solutions. We're not going to solve this problem. This is a problem of national, if not international, measure. We have the Narva Bill does not have the resources to deal with this on, on this level. What we can do is we can mitigate. Unless we are unless people have uh, you know a vision of, of uh, like the movie First Blood where somebody gets beaten up and thrown out of town, the problems are not going to go away. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it. What, I, what we need actually more than even just ideas for solutions is a process. We need a process. Eric. Uh, I, I'm gonna, we're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to call on people. Well, let's talk about process. How is the best way to go about keeping the discussion on process? Before you start, let me just say the paper you got is this still a paper that has some relevance to what we do. We have meeting again. This paper is kind of divided down into eight issues. Now, these issues are basically, uh, I think, like four issues, really, because you have a situation where one thing is talking about lack of respect, lack of safety, drugs and alcohol. That's one group about, that's about neighborhood watch and protecting our community and making it secure. But if you could be one group dealing with that kind of security idea, there's also the trash and the feces things, which are either go together or they don't, and they're probably together. And then there's a number of things about strain our resources, lack of public housing, panhandling, and this is the social service part. So I think we could actually have, at the most, four, four groups or three groups, the trash and feces go together, um, and you have a group that's interested truly in respecting the town, mutual respect around the town, and the other groups about how do we get resources, what don't we have as resources, why don't we have resources. See what I'm saying? Does that sound agreeable based on what we're trying to do by thinking about what we did last week? We thought about what we did last time, and this is the result. So I'm hoping people will take the idea that there is some thinking going on here that's trying to get us into a group that's more focused on whatever. I don't care if you solve problems or not. Not solving problems, but this is together I'm talking about. All right, you, you have to be very patient. You're not the world's smartest person. All I can do is quote somebody better than me. Somebody better than me said, but you must rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, and all filthy language from your lips. Another person just as greater than me also said, if you have hatred towards your brother in your heart, you have sinned. Why do we all blame each other? Why don't we stand together and do something? Me and my friends came here to offer a proposal. Stand next to me, I give you my word. Within months you'll see real progress. Quit blaming people. Stand next to people that love this area. Sorry I don't have a job, I'm dying of cancer and I can't afford medicine, I can't buy a house. I do live in the woods. Ask John Casoli how my camp has ever looked. It's always been clean and it's not my home. I love this place. Why do we gotta threaten people? Why do we gotta argue? Why do we gotta say mean things? We all serve one God, we all serve one community. If we are honestly from humble, we love humble. Let's get the outsiders out, leave everybody else gone, and keep it nice. If people are messing things up, we ask them nicely to leave. It's not hard. People show up at their campus and say, you've got to go. They leave. We don't got to threaten people. We all serve one God. That's what we're trying to do. No, no, no. We can ask you to move. It's like you're asking us to move. Wait, 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 w
We also know that John brought in photos to show that, in some respects, it hasn't been a success. So, how, so a process in which the, a, a watch is constantly reevaluated for its success. This is working. This is not working. Um, it, it's really the only way we can make it a little better. And I don't think it's always, it, it, it's going to be, I don't think we have to have a mind that there's a total solution, because there isn't. This is not, a, this is, a, a, you know, a, a world that is not perfect. But we can mitigate it. And, we can, and, uh, and right now, I think we need to work on the task force in terms of, um, in terms of coming up with a structure in which we can at least begin to monitor uh, and, um, and, and where the different groups come together with their representations and say, this is not <coughs> um, That's just my thought. Yes. Uh, what I'd like to touch on is the fact that in the years that I've been here, in the past, we, even though we've had the homeless, we haven't had the business owners taking complaining so much about them taking hanging out in front of the business and stuff. And that's because at Broadway we had the open field to sit in, get in, get in the shade over there, get out of the sun, be able to sit down and relax. Over here we had the park, but now you look over in Redway, it's all fenced in. You can go close to it, you're going to jail. Yeah, but you understand that but there's a mutual cycle here. I understand that's that. a response. I understand that, but let me finish. I'm, I'm, I'm observing. Okay, you got to shut down uh, the park over here in Carbonville, where people can't go sit over there anymore in the gap and congregate. So what do they do? They go sit on the sidewalks, because the sidewalk belongs to everybody. So they take and they sit there with their dogs and their weed and everything. And then I, I understand the business problem. <coughs> business people's problems. Because it, they're taking chasing away their business. But yet, we got to take a look at it from all points. Yes. Yes. It's not just one point. It's not just this point yes. over here. It's from all points. Everybody needs a place to go, whether it's to the bathroom, to get cleaned up, just to get out of the sun and right. sit down and relax. But how do we do this? How do we do this without it, without getting having the place be trashed? Okay. Well, the thing is. is it's always going to get trapped. There's always going to be trash cans out. Excuse me, everybody. Let me sit down. Let's do this. Okay. There's always going to be trash around because there's always going to be people that disrespect, whether they're homeless or whether they have a house or whether they work. Everybody takes it and does it. Not, I, I, excuse me. Not everybody does, but every type of people do the same thing. But yet, you get blamed on the homeless. All right. So I mean, where do you want where do you want this problem at? Off, out of the way, where the tourists can come in and do their thing, and we can make the money and have a happy a happy town here, or have all of us right there in the middle of town. So I mean, the only the only explanation would be is to take and find some place where the homeless can go, where they will not be harassed, where they have a safe place. Where they can clean up, go to the bathroom, rest, and relax. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dismissing it. Unfortunately, both sides, all sides of the solution, run into the problem of the county, and that's you know, and, and we, and, and that county, the county's not represented here tonight. You're talking about money. Money and humans. Yeah, they were. Let's go. Let me ask you this. How much money is going to the Okay, well how much how much money is being wasted when these guys here are going to deal with somebody that's being put in the house? I don't know. Where they could have been over here taking care of the details, but I've been promising her a chance to speak. Hello everyone. I had a mention of you things at the last meeting, and I noticed things have been changed and down a little bit. But we do have a we do have a big problem. Uh, when I did come in here seven years ago, you didn't have a place to go and sit. There's no place to sit anywhere anymore. Even the people that come here and try to spend money in your community. I've been in the past week watching all these bicyclists go dead through town. And they have nowhere to put their bikes. They have nowhere to sit, to walk away from their bike, to spend money in your community. Uh, when I first came here, I was a traveler. I come here for your redwoods, to be part uh, of the woods and the environment and uh, no smog, peace, no pollution, 
It's really beautiful. And you can get that back. Uh, you have two spots in town that you can split this all up. Uh, the empty lot here, next to the video store. You can set that up for travelers awesome. coming through to have a place to sit and park your bikes. You can lock your bikes. No, I, I have that. Someone else? Yes. Um, yes. You can have it's somebody. Privately owned. Right. So after all these meetings, letting everybody vent and give your solutions to your community, I think you should have a private meeting among the businesses and the owners to come up with a solution to solve their town. Yeah, but why is it up to them? Because, because, because I'm the same thing. The reason it's up to them. They need to have their group. Right. Yes. That's exactly what needs to be done. Because there's a lot of tension in this room tonight. And the last meeting, there was a little tension, but it, it stopped because we was actually coming up with <coughs> solutions instead of pointing fingers uh, and attacking I, each other. I think the proposal actually yes. of a meeting of the business owners yes. and a meeting of, of the people, yeah. the different ones separate, and then right. coming up with a joint, that so is an excellent yes. question. Yes, we can separate the two solutions. And have a of You can put more commodities back in. Make people stand down in the park, not up on the hill. All right. Well, you can make it to where you don't details. see the problem. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Why can't we let the kids? Stuck a red bandana on your gate 
and a person that needed food would come up and say, I saw the bandana, what can I do? And that's pretty damn simple. And we will try some of this stuff and we're not really looking for That's right. That's all right. I just want to make a comment. There is prejudice, but it works always. I, I come from kind of the, the flower child kind of milieu, and we have our prejudices. Thank we have our own bigotry. We realize that when we're talking with each other, that we keep that in the forefront so we can start. <laughs> Up on so yeah. we make our judgments. We make our judgments about what people mean, right. how they act. But this is civil rights. We're talking about human and civil rights here. It has nothing to do with whether you like the person or not. I agree. Or whether you like the way they dress or the job that they do or the words that they speak even. Okay. If, they, if somebody uses curse words and you're not educated or self-controlled enough to understand that, then you've got the problem. You can't get past Something has already happened with, with Ben the Rose. That was the bright right. spot of night. Something yeah. already happened there. So I and I'm and this is I don't want this to sound like I'm talking at a particular group because I actually think that something also has to happen with the business owners. There actually needs to be business owners who get together and talk about how to do this without without being in fear of being in, in, in a conflict right now. And and then there needs, to, there needs to be formal organization in, in various interest groups, or whatever we want to call them, and then they need to send delegates. I think that's the only way we're, we're going to do this, because it, it, there, and, and there can be a moderate, and it'll probably fail at times, and then we can probably pull it back together, and, um, and, and, and say, look, what, what happened outside my store? And then the group can respond as a whole. I think that's a process we've got to get going, momentum. I'm sure it's happened in other communities. And if other communities can do it, we can do it. Um, yeah. OK, go ahead. Yeah, let's, let's start off by having a, a little porta potty sorry, Lucy. And uh, you know, place porta potties strategically here and there, uh, one side of town, the other, a couple. Start out by doing that at least. And then uh, possibly lead into uh, everybody doing a fundraiser and putting up a, a metal uh, uh, shelter with a couple picnic tables somewhere that's land that's donated or, or, or the vets uh, park over here or something. We got to do now. Type. You're right. I mean, it, it, it sounds easy to say, okay, let's just put a porta potty down. It's got to be maintained. It's got to be. I mean, I'm, I'm, willing, I'm willing to help me. Right. Um, all right, all right, and that's the first. And then, uh, that's the next one. Karen, that's not an amplifier. I know. And I think we need a timekeeper. Excuse me, I think we need a timekeeper. Yeah, we lost John. We definitely need a timekeeper. <laughs> I'm just curious. Give a thing about our kids, and, and if, it, if it's okay for them to use the public bathroom. How many minutes are we doing? 
Uh, why don't we just, so we, we've been doing three, why don't we do three, I think we're going to Sorry. 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 Um, my name is Harry Jasper, uh, and I've lived here in Garberville for almost three years now. Um, I work as a hospital administrator. I know I'm not always the most popular guy myself, um, but on this issue, um, I, I personally um, don't feel like I've heard a great solution on any really good solution from either side of the aisle, very similar to, uh, I don't think I've heard a great solution on either side of the aisle of healthcare reform uh, as well. But <clears throat> I was asked by someone in the community who's very passionate about putting the porta potties in, um, uh, getting a public restroom in, um, prior to going to the chamber meeting, uh, he asked me, what, what's some advice you might give me? And, I said, uh, in my opinion, the most effective thing you can do when you're going to another group who, who has a different position than you is to really seek to understand that other side's perspective. And not until the other side feels heard and understood will they be open to listen and to hear your side perspective. And, and I think, I'm, I'm not telling you this would work or not, but I think if you did break into who's really on the right and who's really on the left and who's really up and who's down on this issue, and then you ask them to truly draft some type of statement that says, this is how, if we were you, this is how we believe you feel about the lack of porta potties. And if we were you, business owners, this is how we think you might feel about having uh, you know, the homeless issue and the trash that's done. But not until someone, the most basic human need is, is the need to feel understood. And I, I think we've really, I hear a lot of people feeling not understood here. Um, and the other thing is, I, I think you need to start with some real ground rules uh, about what are the rules that, um, most people would agree on for uh, respect and uh, what listening or, or speaking. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting three you. minutes, but before we go to the field, I want to actually, if you can, well, I can engage you there. But I mean, you raised a good point. And one of the things we did want to accomplish with these meetings was to let people vent to a certain degree, not, not to get personal, but to really. Get, get out and be heard. And of course, it, you know, in the court, everybody got their voice up. That doesn't mean you're being heard it, it, just because you're allowed to speak. And so we, we do need to come up with a process for that. I think <coughs> to a certain degree, people are heard, but, but we, we're, 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 we're getting into a cycle and a process where we, just, we fall back into the same pattern because there are real strong feelings. From, from this, and, and we, from my perspective, I, I do think that everybody has a real good point. It is a civil rights issue. People are, rights have been violated, and, get, and yes, it is a, a basic business issue because it, it is people do not want to come to Garberville. I understand what you're saying. People driving off the highway, the first thing they see is the, the cluster group up on there, I, and, and that doesn't make these things mutually exclusive. And we do have to find a way to do that. But I also want to comment that, that where we made progress tonight was that some progress had been made. If we could incrementally make a little bit of progress on the ground, then a little bit communicating, then a little more progress on the ground, then a little bit, that is how things get done. That's how countries get out of wars and stay out of wars. I don't envy the position you have to have to facilitate this. But <laughs> There is a big difference between feeling that you were heard mm -hmm. and feeling understood. Yeah. And yeah. 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 I, I, I suspect that there's a lot of you people here, because I know a lot of you on both sides of this issue, that feel kind of the way I am. It isn't an either or to me. I totally believe in the civil liberties and in the humanitarian aspects of the, of the human being, 
in all aspects with compassion and care for them. I totally am on that side. And I totally believe that a lot of people are having definite real problems here with the whole situation and everything. I totally believe in both of those issues. And I totally know that, that there's intelligent people in, in the left side and in the right side, if you're going to call them that, but intelligent people that understand that you cannot put anger into the situation and expect to get positive out of it. If you want to get positive out of it, you've got to put compassion into it. You've got to go into it with a warm heart and thought and share with each other us here and stuff. And it's like, we aren't one side or the other. Most of us, I think, here understand both sides of all this. So it's like, it's like we just have to come to that to deal with it together. So here's where I differ in that I am angry and there's a lot of people who are angry and I don't think that that, and typically in, in movements, when we talk about movements, when we're against the war, we talk about that sometimes. But, but what I think, the framing, I wanted to talk about the framing of how this is being talked about and also a little bit about the facilitation, which I appreciate that they are doing it. But the first thing is the framing is that people are talking about it as being like, well, I, this is my issue and this is how I feel about it, when it's actually about power and resources. And that's why when somebody <coughs> says, when somebody has the power to say, I don't want to put, we can't afford to put a bathroom in for you, that is very different than somebody saying, I have to go like that and not having a place. And so everybody can be as nice as they want, but there's people in here that have more power and more resources. And instead of talking about it as like, well, these people on this side that feel this way, these people on this side, that's not what it is. There's people who have resources <coughs> and power to keep things a certain way, to keep the cops on certain people's butts. Let me just give the thought here. And there's people who who don't. And so and so there's going to be people who are angry because tonight they're going to deal with the other end of that power. Right. Everybody else needs to go back in their heads. Well, that was a good conversation. Wait a minute. Ask something else. The other thing I wanted to say was that I noticed, I don't remember his name, but I was around. I came through town. We were going Richardson Grove and we bought some food and we came out and we put, our, put ourselves in the vehicle and we had some mechanic guy come out and yell at us and we thought we were going to help Anyway, that guy in nice. his van was sitting there. The guy who was speaking, the vet that was speaking right there, he was gentle, he wasn't angry. He was saying there's something very simple. And my, my, my issue I just want to bring up on facilitation is that I believe, and then the young woman who spoke over here, the blonde who said she came here for the redwood, which is rare down here to here. You had a response that negated, and it sounded just like this guy. We can't really do that. Like it negated their ideas about letting people be somewhere, but then, and so I felt like there was like a bias when people were, and we had it was solution based and all that stuff. And there's this automatic, there's these rules. We can't actually do these things for people. So we can right. just keep arguing about it, and the people with the power to fight the power. I couldn't wait for the start. I will get to you. I, you know, I, I'm somebody who's been politically active. I agree that agitation is absolutely essential in some situations, but there has to be a follow-through. Once what, what you've been heard, there has to be a follow-through. Again, we're talking real world. What would you like to see that addresses the business? Because business? You, you, you do agree that businesses have to make money, that they've got families that they're trying to raise. That, um, that that they, they really just want so to operate the businesses. Yeah, the, the, what, in, 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 not, in, not in the best of all worlds, because the best of all worlds, we've got a, a lot of solutions that have to be dealt with beyond the community level. But do have your own resources, for the resources that we have here and now, what is your best? Okay, do take care of immediate fires right now. We understand it's a human right for there to be a place for somebody to go to bathroom. I can hear people say that they don't want to pay for it and all that stuff, but we had somebody who works her butt off on the street who paid for a porta potty, and the same people that said we don't want to pay for it wanted it gone. You take care of things right now. You take care of tonight. People aren't going to get harassed where they're sleeping. Then you start talking about, and you can't regulate manners. 
So if you can't, if people are so weirded out by saying, excuse me, can I walk by, then there's really something wrong in Southern Humble. But I'm, but it's not with the people that, you know, and so it's, so you're asking what what can what can people do now? I mean, the, the problem is the lack of bathroom. The problem is not that people are defecating because everybody does it. The problem is the lack of bathroom. So that's the solution we have to fill that need. So what is the solution? And the other thing I want to I'm responding to your question. Though. The other thing I've seen in another town, when the business people decide, just like the, the man said, I don't know his name, but it's like if you don't want people on your sidewalk and it's a small town and there's these fields and then you enclose them, I use that word intentionally, then you're going to have people right there. So these towns are Jada, which I don't live in, but it used to be just like this area. Colorful people liked it for its hippies, right? And now it's like this cutthroat, nasty thing. And so instead of biking through town and being like, cool, look at all the hippies in Northern California, they're like seeing the cops there. Well, we have the solution now. We have the solutions right now. We have Blake, whose wife had coffee for a minute. Salt and battery. Right, right. I'm just saying. And Why we had, that we, we had, um, because we had, we, we had a six-year-old girl who was apparently terrified last week uh, due to it. What do we do about it? I'm not okay. saying. I'm not condemning. I'm just saying. Solution. I know. I, I pulled in across the street from Ray's with my friend, and we had this guy. We thought he was hollering out his truck because his truck was falling apart. We were going to start helping him, and he. A, a verbally abused us. So the reason I blow it off is because you stay on. The reason I did it, I don't blow it off, but anecdotal. And listen to this. Somebody's now. an asshole one day does not. You can't prejudice the whole thing just because this I have other housed people this is do it. fucked up things to me. This is it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not defending. Uh, I'm not defending. Uh, right. I'm not defending. I'm not defending. I'm not defending. In terms of solutions, um, I know I was involved with, I know there are a lot of people in this community that, that have done water and have done things on their own. I know a couple of people here in this room who a couple of years ago got together with private resources and a, a local business center in Redway who had space available and allowed us to bring it out so we could put about 15 cows in there during the winter time so people would sleep inside. So that, so that, so, so that has happened. Um, that's, and my group is, is still working on that. I know uh, a woman in Pillsville who has a, a, a place that she does, goes out of her way to house people in her spot. So there are people in this community already kind of here who are actually being part of, of the solution. Um, I know the bad thing, just pointed out over there, last year, along with Deborah Carey, um, just as any business would, talking about having a porta party here, how much would it cost? That issue has been brought up. Let's find out how much it costs. And because I know Six Rivers uh, was willing to, to how much? Go ahead, say it. Uh, it's right around $150 a month. $150 a month. With the wash station. With the okay, and that's Six Rivers, that's a local company. It doesn't cover maintenance, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they come. Okay. Okay. They come. Okay. 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 Okay, that's sick. Uh, that um, there are <coughs> housing, if anyone's following the general plan uh, update, is, is a big issue in the county. Um, my two solutions, and it's only my own idea, is if we, there is one huge ass, excuse my language, um, hotel in Runway that is um, being, uh, has a sign up for first sale for since I've been here and I've heard longer. We can fundraise and buy that, and that's a 70 unit. Uh, thing already there that we can uh, run and maintain, maybe even use it as a, a possible way of uh, training people to work in the hotel restaurant business. Um, I'm not able to show how we're working together, but that's a nonprofit uh, group that maybe uh, could support something like that. Um, also, um, I know that the, I don't know what's happened uh, recently, but I want to Yeah, yeah, the, the state park that we have down there in Benbo. Okay, um, I don't know. The, the state said when they defunded it that if a local county or a nonprofit group took it over, uh, they would be able to process that so to keep it open and have a spot for people to be outside and, and maintain that. So the solutions are there already in our faces. And, exactly. And there are groups that are already organized to be a part of the solution. 
perceptions, I realize, because I come through town and it looks great to me. I mean, I drive through, I don't see trash and mess, and but I do agree that there, there are issues. Uh, but I'm curious, I've heard Blake speak a lot about the problems. What are your solutions? What are the solutions that you have? I've, I've given some of my solutions that people show respect for each other, that people clean up after themselves, that people don't trash other people's and public property, that people care about each other and the, the, the environment around them. I mean, you go above Redway, where I used to play when I was a little kid. A couple of Christmases ago, I tried to take my kids walking up there. There's hypodermic needles, there's garbage, there's stuff absolutely everywhere. There is no way I would let my child play up there now. This is a place where not all that long ago, we ran around and climbed trees and had a blast. We had our whole heyday there. It's absolutely disgusting. Another issue that people are not paying attention to is that we've got a disease factor. Solutions. But you asked for solutions, you're right. I think this guy just hit it on the head. We have to have respect for each other. We have to have respect for other people's things. We have to have respect for the community at large. When saying, excuse me, to walk by on the sidewalk, that doesn't make, I mean, if somebody's standing there, of course you say, excuse me. But when there's five people and four pit bulls, you shouldn't have to say, excuse me. They should know to sit on the curb. Sidewalks are for walking. They're not for sitting. They're for transportation purposes. They're to get from one point to another. But one, one, one thing that's come up is, is, you know, if, if something is happening, it, that we talked about the self-policing, there probably also needs to be a means to contact the group that's working on it. Um, that, a, a means uh, to do that. And the problem is, is if, if people who are without addresses are probably also mostly without cell phones, maybe not everybody, but, um, but there needs to be, but there, there needs to be a way to do it. Now, for instance, if Blake has a bunch of crap or whatever dumped in his bag, if there was somebody he could call and say, you know, I've got this, I've got this, this issue here, and they showed up to clean up. I mean, that yeah, would go a long way. That would go a long way. But the problem is we shouldn't have to call we well, well, know, we know. We know. Garbage. but we got to start. We got to start somewhere. Yeah, start right. somewhere. Right. There are garbage cans. There are. There are. Garbage. There aren't enough dumpsters around. Yeah. There, there aren't are enough dumpsters. Have, we have to start somewhere. We have to start somewhere. There isn't. Um, okay. Somebody over here, and then over there, actually, and then Andy. Sorry. This is uh, a little information as well as history too. Some of you guys might remind me of the front page last year when I protested the town square. I'd like to remind you guys that one of your own resources is private property. So when you're donating to those cans, or you can't stay there for an hour, you can't smoke, you can't drink, you can't have dogs, that's because it's private property. So as a community, you should pressure him, John Smith, and that board. Last year, we were in the paper, we lost him 80 grand, and the issue was bathrooms. I still stand out there every Friday in the clock when I can. 
and my sign pointed right at the road where everybody comes walking out and says, you need a bathroom, and it's got John Schmidt's home number on it. It's in the, <laughs> it's in the book, it's public record. Here's some more history. Uh, the Medill Community Center, everybody's savior, and oh, they're feeding everybody. Well, they're trying their best to completely disengage themselves with the Medill Mill program. That's baloney. That's the poor people. That's the truth. This is but, 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 but just when, when we do, we do they are trying to disengage themselves from anything. They've been reaching out to the clergy, they've been trying to find a new location so that we can serve people. Now, here's history again. Remember last year, Joy the Sandwich Lady? How many times did she get kicked through Redway? 84 year old lady serving sandwiches. These are the members of the business that you're all saying we need somebody to do something, and they have. They put up fences and they kick us. That's history here. Stuff we've already started addressing, and the people with the power put up a fence as private property, and the ones that have a community center are shutting the door. Because they're more interested in concert. That's where you need to put your pressure right. on the Matilda board and this town square. All right, well. Uh, we see it the same way, but I see it as a real contributing problem to the behavior that is frustrating people. And I have this thought that, you know, it's, it's hard to prosecute people, and I get that, but if you guys would just arrest, I mean, we can all see who the dealers are, and if they're arrested every time they're spotted doing their thing, then you guys confiscate their goods, and even if the DA can't successfully prosecute, it puts an interruption in the supply chain and then the behavior gets better, the dealers will tend to move somewhere else. And, you know, everybody has a right to be who they are, but that's a particularly egregious problem. It, it just breeds toxicity in the behavior and the mindset of the community. Yeah. And um, yeah. that's just something that I see that would be super helpful, is if when you guys see them, you just book them out, get them out of here for a minute, and confiscate their goods. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I came here tonight with a solution I learned about just this morning. I saw a video that USA Today put together two years ago about uh, how they deal with it in the city of Florida. And they have a camp. And as you look at the video, and just I recommend you check it out. This USA Today, I think it's called New Homes. And they all have Coleman tents, and they're all numbered. They have shower, they have bathroom facilities. They even have computer rooms set up for people. Because their attitude about the situation is different. <coughs> and it's a different demographic than here. But there, they recognize that the homeless problem for them is most of the people who've lost their homes, lost their jobs, etc. Now, what I see happening here is we've got a fundamental paradigm split. If we, you have two groups that come together and they say, we want to make a building town. But one group says, we want a hospital. And another group says, we want a school. You're not going to make your building. Okay, and what I see here, especially last week, or last meeting, was people who were overgeneralizing about a group of people. And if you just go back and look at the video, and every time you hear homeless, you put in the word black, Jew, Muslim, You'll be able to recognize that there is a certain, it's a hatred. Yes. And what I saw was I, last week people talking about people who smoke marijuana in public, people who drink in public, people who do drugs, and then they take all of that and blame it over the homeless. And then you've got people who work with the homeless, or you know, a lot of business owners have befriended them and have relationships with them, and they have a different perspective. I don't see how we're going to come together to deal with solutions like this camp if people really don't want those people to be here in the first place. So I think what we need to do is we really have to address this aspect. How are we looking at these people? Because if we're looking at them very differently, you know, it's a good effort on all of our parts to come here with the intent of working with the other side, but it's not really going to come up with a solution. And that's why I want to be here. I, I want to come up with solutions. And other things to recognize are much bigger forces here. I mean, a lot of the problems are because we don't have national health care. Okay? Because we don't have full employment. 
you know, because we don't treat our veterans well, and we don't take care of our mentally ill. So we have to play with all of those things here. And so I'm sympathetic with everybody's suffering. And I'm not trying to blame anybody, but I hope people will just recognize that as long as we have this divergence in attitudes, we're not going to really come up with a solution. Right. Exactly. If we're going to build a toilet, we totally should be building a composting toilet, not turning back to this strange mentality where we're shitting in our precious water, right. where we're relying on some industrial system that is causing more damage than it'll ever do any good. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're getting close to, we're past our closing time. Oh. Um, the idea, what I want to say is, I'm, I'm the dog and mechanism that calls these meetings, and I'm not giving up. I love what happened today. You can't scare me, I can't be scared. So, <laughs> roar on, wonderful humble, you know, let's go plug and humble. It's great. So, what I'm thinking is this these Fridays are opened up because nobody has events hall on Friday, so we can always get them from 6 to 8. On the 4th, which is November 4th, is a Friday, I believe, we should have a meeting for people who want to prepare for the next meeting, which will be the 18th. So, people get together on the 4th. We talk about how we could do something, what can we do for the 18th meeting. We have the 18th meeting, we have a consensus by people who came to an earlier meeting, so we have a nice, regular go meeting that people can have confidence in again. We just start again to have our meetings, and we don't give up the ship. So that's what's going to happen. You can't stop me from doing it. You can, you can do other meetings if you want to, but I'm going to publicize this one, and, and that's what's going to be what's going to happen. So, I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would hope that the, the different groups start going out and make it. Uh, I, I guess I'm glad we have to do it on the business end. Uh, and, but we need to, we, we do need to get the smaller groups. I think it's important to have the bigger groups. We are going to talk to each other. Um, but we definitely need to have, have the smaller groups meeting. I, I, something happened that we don't want to lose with Feather Rose. That went, went outside of it. Something happened that was a positive. <laughs> Yes. We need to expand on it. And so maybe if we can expand on it here in Garberville, a, 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 a full system, but you know, somebody needs to step up and organize it. And uh, we don't have the mayor of Redway anymore, but we have some other candidates. You know, we can do it on that side. We need business people to be able to interface with that group. Uh, and we need, so there needs to be a working group in those things. It's actually more than two sides of this. It's not even one or two. It's a multifaceted issue. And there's a lot, of, a, a lot at stake here. And a couple of the major players are not here. I mean, that's the county, the state, and the federal government, and you know, whatever. But, um, but that's, but, but they, you know, ultimately, there's no solution. So, I, yeah, I would encourage you to continue. I'm sorry I lost it halfway through the meeting. Um, it was, uh, it, you know, that was a, a major mistake on my part. I, I, and I will talk to Deborah Carey. She's around. I will apologize to her. Um, although I really did think the ancient comment was way, way out of line. That's not, that, that's not really the thing. Was, I, I understand. But I think that that would have shut everybody down. There was no call. And, 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 but it wasn't the first comment that was made. It was escalating. It was escalating to the point. That was that reached a crescendo. It, it began and it, and it came from all sides. Yes. Uh, so it was it was there. Uh, um, yes. How come it was cut off one of the most powerful people? Yeah. Went to go talk to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Why would they cut off that? Yeah, because she was told to stop talking because she was told to be with Ended. Well, that was, that was my fault.
Well, when she said fiction, I saw red. Yeah. We got to get past that. We got to get past that.